Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are for Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story is about EncroChat. A lot of big claims and accusations have been made by the Dutch authorities in the past few days against the British authorities specifically the National Crime Agency. They say that the evidence that is being used to convict people via the phone network hack has no legal standing. And at the end of last month, a case was overturned on this basis. And we're going to discuss two topics from ComputerWeekly.com, which is one of the few media outlets that have actually discussed this. No one in the UK has covered this yet. So before we start, I'm going to briefly explain what EncroChat was because I know a lot more people are watching these episodes now. We've got a playlist on EncroChat that you can watch to catch up on. But it was basically an encrypted chat network, but you couldn't just download it like WhatsApp or Telegram. You had to buy the handsets and there was a monthly fee against this. Now they have revealed in court more details about how they did the hack and why as well. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the video. The first article we're going to reference is from the 15th of April from Computer Weekly. They say the Dutch accused the UK of damaging confidence by disclosing details of EncroChat police collaboration. The Dutch Public Prosecution Service, which is their version of the Crown Prosecution Service here, says that Britain has damaged confidence by revealing details into the EncroChat network. Prosecutors in Rotterdam have accused the UK of damaging confidence in law enforcement bodies by disclosing details of joint police operations to infiltrate the EncroChat encrypted network. The Dutch Prosecution Service has written to prosecutors in the Netherlands saying that the UK wrongly disclosed documents from confidential meetings between law enforcement agencies and prosecutors inside the British court. The letter dated the 24th of March 2021 appears designed to counter suggestions made in UK court hearings that the Dutch had a role alongside the French in harvesting millions of supposedly secure messages from EncroChat phones. The international police operation based on data collected from the crypto phone network has led to hundreds of arrests and now convictions in the UK, and also dozens more in France, Holland, Germany and Sweden. The Dutch have made accusations the Brits have broken confidence, and the letter claims that British prosecutors disclosed confidential details of the operation against EncroChat as they sought a ruling on admissibility of intercepted EncroChat messages in court. Law enforcement agencies from France, Holland, the UK and other countries held a series of meetings at European institutions, identified as Europol and the European Union Agency for Criminal Justice Cooperation, Eurojust, and this was to coordinate action against EncroChat. The purpose of these meetings was to discuss with various representatives from different countries whether they see opportunities to cooperate and if so, what legal and practical way could they do it? Unlike the UK, France and the Netherlands are permitted to tap streaming data and to use it as evidence in court, according to the letter from the prosecution service. So the discrepancy between UK laws and laws in France and the Netherlands led to court hearings last year to decide whether the EncroChat material could be used to bring prosecutions against British criminals associated to it. Witnesses were heard and documents submitted to substantiate the position that data was admissible as evidence. The British released documents from confidential meetings and disclosed information from the French and Dutch investigation team that had communications to the authorities through diplomatic channels, according to the letter. They said such information should never have been revealed in this way. So that basically states that the NCA don't have legal access to that in the courts in relation to how our system works. So there was actively changing the law without actually changing laws while lobbying the judge to get this done. 
The Dutch Prosecution Service acknowledges that the Dutch Operation 26 Le Mans was in cooperation with the French and their codename was Emma. They worked closely on EncroChat investigations and we covered some of them in the past as well. One of them was a torture chamber that they actually found in the Netherlands. According to a press release by Europol in July 2020, France and the Netherlands have cooperated in investigations to do with encrypted services since 2018. The Forensic Laboratory of France and the National Forensic Institute in Holland went on to work on a two-year project with the University of College Dublin to study how to break passwords of encrypted systems in February 2019. This cost two and a half million pounds and it was called Cerberus. So what's extraordinary about this law being passed in the UK? And yet we're being told that if we don't give the government new authorities immediately um, without any debate, just taking their word for it, despite the fact that these exact same authorities were just declared unlawful. They developed advanced methods and techniques to crack encrypted information used by criminals by using the power encrypted in the phone's computer graphics card and exploiting vulnerabilities by bypassing encryption. This project played a key role in helping French cyber experts to read messages on EncroChat servers. And the NFI announced yesterday criminals thought they were safe from the police and the judiciary and discussed their cases without care. It turned out the wealth of information we have gathered and shared with our counterparts has benefited a lot. The investigations for the French Digital Crime Unit, C3N, on the outskirts of Paris, was able to trace the servers used by EncroChat to a data centre run by OVH in the Netherlands. The magazine The Computer Weekly established that the French made copies of the servers and shared them with the Dutch in January 2019. October 2019, February 2020 and June 2020. So they'd actually been tracking this since January 2019. They said that they didn't even have access until the year after that originally. And this was part of the initial investigation into EncroChat. By March 2020, the French had set up a national investigation unit and it was employing 60 police officers working in data analytics, technical and judicial investigating. And on the 27th of March 2020, a Rotterdam court authorised Dutch police to collect data from EncroChat phones. The French Internal Security Agency supplied a software implant that harvested data stored on infected phones where they'd already sent the malware originally. French investigators began collecting data live from the phones on the 1st of April 2020, making it available to data police for a secure computer link. The French and Dutch formalised their relationship on the 10th of April 2020 when they formed a joint investigation team into EncroChat with the support of Europol and Eurojust. So with the Cerberus network that they created with Dutch and French counterparts and also Irish, they used that to decrypt passwords and scramble information. The UK is accused of disclosing details of the hacking operation. The UK's National Crime Agency had been collaborating with the French police since early 2019 and they disclosed to the NCA that they had developed a way to penetrate EncroChat in January 2020. According to a court of appeal dated the 5th of Feb 2021, the UK NCA applied for a targeted equipment interference warrant to legally access EncroChat messages from a joint investigation team. The warrant was initially proved by Kenneth Parker, a judicial commissioner, on the 5th of March 2020 on behalf of of the Powers Commission for Investigations. So I didn't even know this, but we have a regulator to how much we can be surveillanced. It was updated to widen the scope of the data collection from EncroChat phones on the 26th of March, the same month. When it was approved by the Powers Commission Brian Leveson, the warrants appeared to suggest that the interception had been jointly undertaken by the French and Dutch law enforcement agencies working together. They said the implant would collect data stored on the phone's handsets, messages, images, usernames, each phone's IMEI number, stored chat messages, images, notes and geolocation data. During the second stage of the operation, the implant would gather messages as they were sent, which meant that the joint investigation team were able to read them long before they'd even been read by the recipient. 
So this is more details of exactly how much they knew about the EncroChat phones. The implant would also instruct EncroChat handsets to provide a list of Wi-Fi data points near them, which would then identify more suspects. So for example, if they revealed your local Wi-Fi in your house, then they would obviously be able to find out that that was being billed from your bank account, for example. The NCA received the data the next day and conducted its own exercise to identify high-risk crimes, including firearms and terrorism, and material relating to ongoing investigations. The harvesting of the messages continued until June the 14th, 2020. Two days after people got EncroChat messages telling them the network had been compromised and advising them to get rid of their phones. But the main point of all of this is the Dutch say they had no role in designing the intercept in the initial hack. The French authorities made it known that the interception tool was developed by them and they stated adding that the French had declared it was their technology and a military state secret. The fact also seems to be insufficiently appreciated and respected by the British authorities, the prosecution service wrote. The letter also denies that the Dutch shared details of the criminal investigation with the French authorities to bolster their case by applying for judicial authority to carry out the hack. The prosecution told the Dutch courts and the French who carried out the attack that the French had already collected the data from the phones before the French and Dutch team had been created. The Netherlands did not request France prior to the joint operation or during it give them authority to the live information that was obtained via the chats being intercepted by France. A Dutch crime journalist said this is very sensitive to the Netherlands because the Dutch public prosecution told the Dutch court it had no involvement in the interception. So for the UK to go against what they've said to their own court would suggest that they was lying. This has been called into question by documents from the UK's National Crime Agency, first reported on a site called crimesite.nl. And it suggests the operation was carried out jointly by the French and the Dutch. If that is true, in court cases there will be questions raised what they stressed, that it was a French hack with no involvement of Dutch police. A judgment by the UK Court of Appeal on the 5th of February found that messages taken from EncroChat phones in the storage of the phone's memory rather than when they were being intercepted could be used in court. The decision sidesteps UK law, which has prevented material from live intercepts being used as evidence in criminal cases by defining the messages harvested from EncroChat as the product of equipment interference rather than interception. The NCA working in collaboration with regional organised crime units and other forces made 1,550 arrests with Operation Venetic, the UK's response to the takedown of EncroChat. The operation has also resulted in the seizure of 5 tonnes of Class A drugs, 155 firearms and £57 million in cash. So, as you can imagine, the last thing the NCA would want is this to fall apart. So, as you can see, that is some very big claims being made by the Dutch authorities. And in this most recent article by Computer Weekly also, that was only a few days ago on the 11th of May, Swedish courts have said they found faults in a lot of the evidence used in these phones. And due to this, they've overturned a case. A 23-year-old man accused of illegal firearm possession based on EncroChat evidence has had the ruling overturned. The Court of Appeal in Stockholm found ambiguities in the evidence from the EncroChat encrypted phone network presented by the prosecution. But they did not reject the material altogether. But the public defender said the verdict clearly says that the evidence has no legal value whatsoever and future trials will have the same outcome. More than 700 phones in Sweden were tapped in the operation, leading to hundreds of investigations and high profile court cases across the country. Investigations from France's Digital Crime Unit infiltrated the network in April 2020, capturing 70 million messages. The mass surveillance hack of EncroChat encrypted network used by organised criminals has sparked a debate in Sweden on, on whether EncroChat messages should be used as evidence in court. Some lawyers argue that mass surveillance violates Swedish law and the Swedish prosecutor Petra Lund said 
There was a precedent to allow material obtained by EncroChat to be used as evidence in our court. There is no need for the Supreme Court to make a decision on this matter. The 23-year-old who's called Abdul al Nuwami was sentenced in February to three years and nine months in prison, but he was released on the 23rd of April after a decision by the Court of Appeal. The court acquitted Abdul and found that the evidence against him was inconclusive and the case against him was largely based on evidence obtained in EncroChat hacks by French and Dutch authorities last year. So you see how judges in cases in Sweden are still referencing Dutch as being involved in the initial hack. And this is why it's getting so complicated, because that wasn't the case. The defendant in the case was acquitted because the prosecution has not convinced the court exactly what happened. As a defender, one could argue that the verdict emphasises that such evidence leaves room for reasonable doubt. So the main thing to take from that initially would be the EncroChat evidence has no legal value. The public defender at the court said this showed EncroChat evidence did not hold up in Swedish courts and it's understandable that the Court of Appeal does not reject the EncroChat evidence outright but it's clear from the verdict that the messages have no legal value. This is the most critical verdict so far and it simply shows the evidence is not going to hold up in a court of law. And there was a really interesting chart that followed it where it says about the number of phones that was infected in the first month of EncroChat when they sent the malware so this would have been installed on the phones when they do the updates and the UK was second so 5,500 people's phones had already been hacked in the first month of the operation. This is really interesting stories and breaking developments in relation to the EncroChat hack and we're definitely going to be coming back because I've got some more EncroChat news on the way so please don't forget to turn on your bell for notifications thank you for 250,000 subs and please don't forget to follow us on instagram as well nearly 100,000 followers on there and we're now on tiktok as well so i really appreciate you joining me for this episode please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i'll be back again very shortly with some more news peace